and welcome to Alzheimer Speaks Radio. I'm your host, Lori LeBay, and I'm so excited that you're joining us today. We are going to have a fascinating conversation as usual as we learn from people all around the world at all ages and stages of life. Stay tuned as we shift our dementia care from crisis to comfort. Here we go. Don't you think about Well, hi, everyone, and welcome back to Alzheimer Speaks Radio. I'm your host, Lori LeBay, and I'm thrilled you can join us today. If you liked our opening music, it's called Clarion Call by the Mark Arneson Band, and I'm so thankful that they allow us to use that for our opening tune. Feel free to download that on any of your favorite music platforms. For those of you that happen to be new, Alzheimer Speaks is about sound information, not just sound bites. We want to talk with people in the trenches, really making a difference. So those diagnosed with a form of dementia, as well as their care partners, um, all kinds of businesses. We have uh, speakers and trainers and authors and movie directors and singers and songwriters and advocates and children doing really phenomenal things. So, um, and, and of course, researchers. So if you think you might be a great guest, please reach out to me at radio at alzheimerspeaks.com. Now, before I introduce you to our guest today, I am going to do a couple of shout outs first. One is if you haven't been to alzheimerspeaks.com lately, please check us out. We've updated the site. In fact, we have one whole section that is just full of free resources that you can grab. In addition to, of course, our services for speaking and training and consulting and branding and all of those things. But you'll really find a lot of great uh, great both audio, video, print, as well as downloadable pieces, uh, tools that you can you can use there. And on that page, you will also have access to Dementia Map. Now, Dementia Map has been a dream of mine for over 40 years. And my uh, co-founder, Dave Wiedrich, and I launched this during COVID. And we have over 150 categories that people can search. We're building it out slowly. We're not just putting people in there to make it look bigger and better. We want the people in there to get back to you when you reach out to them. And you're going to find a lot of things that you didn't know even existed that can support you and your family or your business um, on this journey with dementia. So please go to our free educational resource page. We also have just launched, and I'm really excited about this, um, my book, Betty the Bald Chicken, which has been a keynote story of mine for years. And it is really a story um, designed as a children's book. It's got some questions in there. I think the kids are going to teach us a lot. And I think they're going to open up about a lot of their feelings we might not know about. And it is really not just for dementia, but for anyone who feels like they don't fit in. So it could be anything from uh, divorce and death and bullying, addiction, uh, the list just goes on and on. So please check out Betty the Bald Chicken. So it's time to introduce our guest today. We are going to be talking about where stuff and stories meet. We all have a lot of stuff. And if you've ever had to move, you realize how much stuff you have and what do you do with it? And we are going to be talking with the founders of Artifact um, that have come up with an amazing product that you can access on your computer or as an app as well. So first, I want to introduce you to Ellen Goodwin. She is the co-founder of Artifact. She's the mother of an almost teen. Uh, she's the wife to a cyclist, and she's a cyclist herself, and she loves books and travels, and she's always attempting to, to make her home and garden beautiful. And prior to co-founding Artifacts, Ellen managed strategic partnerships and relationships for a global data technology company. Next, I want to introduce you to Ellen's co-founder, Heather Nickerson, and she is an avid hiker, skier, and collector of stuff. Prior to co-founding Artifacts, Heather served as the president of a private security company, and she authored a book on how to protect your privacy, and don't we all need that these days? 
And joining them is Tara Ballman. She's been on our show in the past. She is the executive director for the National Aging in Place Council, where she champions aging in place issues through collaboration and education. Tara is also the co-author of a newly released book, Aging in Place Conversations, What Industry Experts Have to Say, that rose to ninth in the aging category on uh, Amazon. She also co-hosts a podcast featuring members from the National Aging in Place Council, where stories are shared of how they support people living to age in place. Well, ladies, I am so excited to have you on the show today. I know this is going to be a really fun conversation and your, your product artifacts is going to help so many people. I mean, so many people are dealing with stuff. And sometimes when we have our friends or even family members deal with our stuff, it's labeled junk and we know it's not junk. And so we're going to be able to talk about how to preserve those memories and share those stories and, and even help with wills and things like that. There's just uh, reminiscing all the different ways uh, that, that their stuff, um, their lovely belongings are going to be able to um, enhance life. And that's, that's what it's all about. So before we start here, I'm going to just go around and ask each of you if you've been touched by dementia in your own family or circle of friends. And Ellen, I'm going to start with you if you don't mind. Oh, I don't mind. Hi. We are dealing with dementia in my family uh, directly for the first time with a close family member diagnosed in late November with vascular dementia as well as early Alzheimer's. And so we had already at Artifacts started down this path to support dementia research, and that maybe hardened our resolve to move a little bit faster. Wonderful. Thank you. And Heather, how about you? Um, I have sadly, yes. Uh, my paternal grandmother, um, she had dementia later in life in her 80s. And at the time I was a brand new mom. So I was really overwhelmed. And I think my my father and my aunt handled the bulk of, of what needed to be done with downsizing. Um, but I do have a very special memory of my my grandmother meeting her granddaughter, my daughter for the first time. And I remember that my name and her name got mixed up a couple of times. It was really kind of the first, the first real, I think, visual or physical, I think, representation to me, like, oh, their grandma does have dementia. So, and that was a really very touching memory, but we were, yes. Okay. Thank you. And Tara, how about you? Hi, yes, unfortunately, we went through a similar uh, experience with my maternal grandmother. And um, it actually, it came to light uh, when my grandfather passed, he told my mom and her sister, you're going to have your hands full with your mother, uh, because he was hiding it from people. And so it was a lot for us to understand all at once and led my mom to write a book called a story I call grandma or a stranger I call grandma that's really explaining the diagnosis and the progression of the disease for kids. Wow, that's that's fantastic. It's it's not uncommon when I have a panel and everyone's been touched or, you know, it's it's just this disease is so much bigger than what most people think about because we don't talk about it. And so that's one of the things I love about my job is trying to take the scary out of the conversation. You've all survived. Look at you. You know, you're, you're all working graciously alongside this disease. Well, let's start out with the basics here. And um, Alan, I'm, I'm going to give this to you. And then Heather, if you've got things to add, but what the heck is artifacts, you know, and how did it get started? <laughs> <laughs> how about I'll tell you what it is. And Heather can give you the genesis. It's a, it's a really good story. So artifacts is what we like to say is where stuff and stories me because otherwise stuff is just stuff and we just came back from a roots tech genealogy and family history conference and every single person I asked do you got stuff and they'd say oh I have stuff <laughs> but the problem is we're, there's we found two kind of themes resonating throughout our first year and a half at artifacts which is on the one hand We've got a lot of stuff and it actually can become that burden today, right? We're moving it, storing it, packing it, dusting it for goodness sakes. Um, and it also can become that stuff, that burden tomorrow too on the future generation. And so we wanted to figure out, okay, we know people don't enjoy taking inventories or filling in forms, 
How can we make it fun and really fast and easy to at least capture in 20 seconds, 30 seconds, a minute, this thing matters to me. And it's a piece of my story or your story or the community story. And so that's what we did with our mobile app and our website, where you can simply pick an object, snap a photo. You can even record some audio or video to go with it. We have some favorites I'm sure we'll talk about that have audio and video with them and hit save. You just have a few details there and you can keep adding and editing it as you like. And well, we do enjoy sharing all these stories and connecting. It's a very joyful experience to connect. We're all alive. We're accumulating artifacts every day. And um, we respect the privacy of individuals to make that choice. Everything you create on artifacts is private until or unless you decide otherwise. And we enable a lot of options that way. And as you alluded to, we've also built in some integrations and more coming where, for example, you're like, wow, grandma always said this clock was worth a fortune. And you're like, is it? And so there's a button. What's it worth? You can find out for free. And this is not only because you need to make these decisions about what you keep and what you don't, but also there's tax and insurance consequences. And we also wanted to hit against fraud that can happen when someone's helping somebody else and, and might have ill intent and say, it's, it's worthless. Let me take it to the trash for you and turn around and sell it. Right. So we wanted to enable all of that, that is fast and easy as social media, but with privacy and your story and legacy at the heart of it. But for the Genesis, Heather, do you want to take over? Sure. Um, thanks, Ellen. So the Genesis of Artifacts um, started probably a little over six years ago. Uh, my mother, she passed away very unexpectedly and she was also very young. Um, I've got a bunch of brothers and as the eldest and only girl, they kind of said over to you, good luck with that. So I inherited 6,000 square feet of stuff. And what my brothers and I all wanted to do was ensure that we kept the items that would tell our mother's story for the next generation to come. My daughter at the time was only um, five years old and never really got to know her grandmother that well. So we wanted to keep the things that would, you know, we'd be able to have in the family for generations to come. So we started going through all the stuff and very quickly realized it was very easy to find the monetary value of something. So jewelry, art, china, crystal, you name it. That was the easy part. The really hard part was finding what did it actually mean to our mother. So my mom was an avid reader and no exaggeration had hundreds of books. And we wanted to keep like one or two that were her favorite books. And we had absolutely no idea knowing of what she liked, what she just read because it was available, what she you know, got from a friend that never read. We, we had no clue. It was really simple stuff like that, where how do you pick what to keep as far as a physical object or a reminder or memento? How do you pick that if you don't know the story and the history behind it? So this led to a lot of paralysis within my own family. And just, again, what do you do with this? So we, we kept some things, we parted with a lot of things. And to this day, I, I really have no idea. Did I keep the right things? Did I donate or rehome the wrong things? Did I sell something she would have wanted us to keep in the family? I just don't know. So that was the genesis of artifacts. Um, we figured that if I was having this experience, my family, others were having the same experience. We did several years of market research, asking kind of everyone and anyone that we knew who had suffered a loss in the family, what do you do or what did you do? And we didn't get a lot of really good answers. We got a bunch of, well, I use post-it notes or I use little sticky color-coded dots. And then we heard stories of how some relatives go in and move around those sticky notes or color-coded dots. Um, I think one of my favorites was a gentleman who did an Excel spreadsheet and he had detailed, he was, he was capturing the story and all the details and the financial information. And then he was very proud to add, and it's password protected on my laptop. So my question was, great. Does anyone know that that's there? Kind of looked at me like, oh, no, no one does. So we did all this research, research and discovered there was really no like simple, fun, and easy way to not just catalog exactly what, you know, the stuff is, but more importantly, add and share the story, the history, and the meaning that makes it part of that and kind of the family legacy or the family lore even. So that's how we developed artifacts and how we brought it to market today. Well, what's interesting to me um, is one, we don't think about this stuff until it's kind of in front of us usually. 
<laughs> and and it's usually a death or a move. You know, those are kind of the the two things. And I I just had somebody call me the other day and go, I think we're going to move. No, I just can't get this all done. You know, I just I just I just can't get we're, we're staying put. You know, because it's just too much work because it is not looked at being a fun thing mm-hmm. to do. But when you add that story into the items, mm-hmm. a it is so powerful. But, it, you know, it gives that legacy piece um, yeah. for family and friends. Mm-hmm. It um, And, you know, when it comes to dementia, we had a woman by the name of Susan Session, who's no longer with us, um, who said she went and she marked every piece of value mm-hmm. that she had. And she wrote when she bought it, yeah. how much it cost her and why she bought it. And she, and and the reason she did this and this, I found this really interesting. She said with dementia, we lose bits and pieces of our memory, not at our will, just whenever the heck it wants to fly out of our brain and it's gone. And she said when she had moved several times, she had people help her and go, "Eh, this is junk, you know, you don't need this, you know, or friends, whatever it is. And we all make those judgments when we're helping somebody move. Um, and she said, she realized they were taking her memories away and those pieces triggered good memories for her. And so she marked them to say, please don't strip me of my memories. They're going as they are. These, these pieces are really important to me. So for the dementia community or anyone who is struggling, you know, with memory, um, to me, there's a super added value there um, from the personal point of, of living life to its fullest and being able to create moments of joy and, and moments to reminisce, which I think are so, um, so powerful because when people are, are moving or have passed, we're like, whoosh, 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 whoosh. I mean, we just want to get that process done with. Um, so I, I'm going to add one other thing too, that you had mentioned in terms of value. I, when I was in real estate, of course, I dealt with people moving all the time. And one of my mover friends, uh, Diane, who had, who owns gentle transition, she would always share the story of the stoplight of how to even sort things through. And I don't know if you've ever heard of that, but green was, it's going with me. Um, yellow was not sure. And red was it it can go elsewhere, which could mean the trash, but it could mean to somebody else's house, or it could mean, you know, a donation. And they, she said, when they were sorting, they would always kind of start out with the the reds and the greens, and they'd leave the yellows for later, because those were the things where everybody would get lost and not progress, because they would get sucked into the memories. And when they figured out the reds and the, and the greens, it was easier to determine the yellows. And I, I found that real, real interesting on that. Tara, on you, any thoughts that you have in terms of how this came about? I mean, in the world you live in, um, you know, with helping people age in place, there's got to be some thoughts there for you. Yes, I actually found out about artifacts through one of our members who was a declutter and move manager and said, you have to connect with these ladies. So I did. And it was like one of those moments where you didn't know you needed something until you found it. And then you're like, I need everyone in my family to have this. So I I think it's just a great way. You know, a lot of times our, our parents save things from like, I just went home to my mom's house and she has my first report card and a clip of my first hair. When did we start keeping clippings of hair? So I'm like, maybe we just take some pictures, put it all together make a nice little memory. She was very big into scrapbooking. That seems like a lot of work to me, but artificial facts makes it really easy and we put it all together and one of the things I miss I lost my dad 11 12 years ago one of the things I miss the most is hearing his voice so it was so nice to be able to capture her voice and her stories on these items that mean nothing to me but to her they were they were important and she kept it for a reason and maybe it's because I drew a perfect flower on that picture that day and so you know it was just nice to hear why she saved it but also to be able to declutter and remove things to keep her house safe and, you know, organized. 
Well, and I like that you mentioned scrapbooking because it's kind of a scrapbooking on steroids that can be done much easier without having to spread out tables of, of stuff, you know, because a lot of times people go like, this is my scrap room, you know, my scrapbooking room, you know, and um, I, I just think there's so many benefits. Heather, I wanted to ask you, uh, you know, what are some of the most popular items that that people really want to, I guess, preserve? That's a great question. And we've got um, on our site, we usually list the top three or four you can click in and view, but a big one is tabletop and like homewares in general. So it could be China, it could be, you know, grandma's silver or silver candlesticks. Um, during the holidays, we had a lot of folks doing all sorts of different holiday decorations, um, even um, greeting cards, um, things that are very sentimental that you, you don't want to lose the memory by behind, but maybe you don't actually need to keep the actual item. Um, another big category has been a lot of old family photos. We've all heard that, you know, photos are worth a thousand words. They can't talk. <laughs> I can tell you, I went through bins and bins of old photos, my mom's, and some are still mysteries to me. And it's, you know, I can look at the photo and she wrote the date on the back of some of them, but still that, that gets me nowhere. I have no clue who these people are and what they were doing and why they were together. And even then, why did she save the photo? What does it mean to her? So photos are another a fun category. People have been doing kind of older, um, older photos. We also have folks who really enjoy um, doing a lot of mementos and life's first. So with children, all of those first, you know, you take the baby home and you've got the hospital bracelet and you've got the blanket, you've got the onesie um, as children get older, even looking back on your own life, like that first report card or, you know, that first art project or diploma or, or other things like that. But firsts are a big category for us. And then of course, family heirlooms, which cover, I think a very wide category of what is it? Some of course are tabletop or photos or firsts, but a lot of folks have different objects, be it grandma's rocking chair, or maybe it's, you know, uh, old opera glasses, um, whatever that happens to be. But those, those heirlooms that do tell a story or even future heirlooms that you've acquired to tell the story of your family and your travels and your adventures. Oh, those are wonderful. When you mention the photos, it's like, oh my gosh, when my parents passed away, I had, we have like rainbow boxes from the grocery store, <laughs> just filled, filled with pictures. And, and it was my job, you know, daughter, brothers go handle it type deal. Yeah. And I'm sorting through these things and I'm sorting through them and I'm sorting through them. And I still have like two boxes of pictures. I, I have no clue who these people are. And then I go through them again and I go through them again because the guilt is so great mm -hmm. about tossing them out. Yeah. And so I, I finally, I gave my brothers the pictures that I had and I said, I have two boxes. Do you want to go through them? Well, they didn't want to go through them. And I finally, I, and, and I still feel great guilt over this. I threw them out because we don't have a lot of relatives to be able to even go to, mm -hmm. to find out. And I'm just like, who am I tossing here? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I did. I know exactly. one of my my mom died in 2014, and that still pains my heart, yeah. and because it's such a great way to to share stories and to have conversations, you know, with people as well. And when you were talking about heirlooms, one other thing that um, I might mention, because we ran through this with with my folks, was there were pieces that people wanted because they bought them for. Mm -hmm you know, my parents, and they had a memory of, of their connection with that. And sometimes, you know, the person you're going through might not have that memory as, as deeply as the person giving it. <laughs> Anyways, we, we ran into that a couple of times um, in our family, but it was still important, you know, to be able to, to have that conversation and, and to know yeah know that ahead of time. And, and that's the fascinating part, Lori, is that, you know, your memory is one thing, mm -hmm. the same object could trigger a different memory with someone else. And Ellen's got a great story about artifacting with her mom and how they could look at the same object and have totally different memories or meanings to it. No, that's exactly what I was going to, you're, you're right, Heather. I did a, we have an article on our website. It's called five lessons from artifacting with my mother. And I had made a list in advance. I even show it in the article and about half of the things she's like, Oh, I got a story for this. And the other half, she's like, I don't know, Ellen, I got it at a garage sale. Like, and you can, you can get rid of it. And I was like, no, 
no, no, I have a story for it. <laughs> and, and so we would have to reckon with, okay, like peace, um, let's, let's divide and conquer here. But, you know, I, I think too, going through that process, artifacting my mother, um, we have seen this on repeat over and over with the oldest among us who are now looking at items that they've held on to for 40, 50, 60, 70 years. You know, tomorrow for International Women's Day, we're going to feature this amazing set of artifacts from this woman who's 97. And, and she's looking back at the things she's kept all these years and how telling they are that after she's downsized and decluttered over and over and over, this is what she chose to keep. And it's so, I can't wait to share it tomorrow um, for International Women's Day. I realize this will be, probably be published after, but uh, we'll, we'll have the link available. But, you know, the oldest among us are really taking a look at their life in a different way when they realize I've kept this all this time. Well, and I think that that's cool to give them the opportunity to explain those things. I mean, it's, it, you know, it gives people purpose. It says I'm appreciated. It says I'm, I'm heard. And then even with you, when you were talking about, well, no, mom, we're not getting rid of this because it means something to me. <laughs> Is there a place on artifacts where you can like, okay, subcategory, Ellen wants this, and this yes. is her story. So yes. when the time comes, you know, your brothers or whoever, somebody else doesn't check it out on you. Well, so we have a field that's optional on an artifact. It's called in the future. And it's, it's optional, but it's always there just to encourage you. And we have options, right? So, so my parents are about to downsize after 43 years and they're going to do so in a few, in, in a year. So they can mark sell and they can even set a reminder in six months, this thing's got to go. So we'll send them a reminder. You want to get rid of this thing. Um, there's bequeath and you can say to whom you can say you want to donate it and even list the organization you would like it to go to or to benefit. Um, there's even one of my favorites is too late it's gone. Enjoy the memory. <laughs> but, but the idea is, yes, we're trying to nudge people to think about that. And that field though is locked down because what we were also fearful of is, you know, mom has three kids and she picked one of them to get it. We would rather she share that information than it be shared via our platform so that she can have that conversation when the time is right. Well, and the nice thing, even if somebody physically gets it, somebody else can still have a replica of the story. You know, and then, and then still know that, you know, if something, let's say you get it and something happens to you, where does it go next? I mean, there, there might be a trail there that can be tracked. So, because I think a lot of times like family heirlooms and stuff, they, it's lost in the shuffle because people don't know the stories. They don't know the value. Uh, when you were talking about downsizing, I had to laugh because when my folks moved up to the lake, I just, my mom was kind of a pack rat. So I'll, I'll just say that up front. And she, she knew that. So she, I don't think she'll strike me down, but um, I thought I'm going to start easy. I'm going to start in the linen closet. <laughs> she had like a hundred washcloths for two people, <laughs> things from rags that should be tossed out to others that could go down to the garage or, you know, the utility room to brand new ones with tags on. And even something like that would be fun to capture because we, you know, we, had, I'm like, mom, why, why? Well, you know, it was because of, you know, she grew up where they didn't have much. She grew up during the great depression. And it was like, I forgot that. That makes total sense, you know, to kind of have this clamoring to not want to give anything away because you might need it someday. And that was a good reminder to me. Um, of who my mom was, you know, and, and how she was brought up and, and all of that stuff reflects in, in who we become, you know, over our lifetime. And so I think the stories that artifacts can gather um, can really be appreciated on so many different levels. Heather and I always say, you'll know us by our artifacts <laughs> because they're, they're quite eclectic and full of our personalities. But, you know, Lori, you said something that I think is really important. Artifacting is an experience. Mm -hmm. It gives us purpose. This is not, it helps end of life. Yes, but it's not about end of life necessarily, right? We're alive. This is an everyday thing. We can intergenerationally artifact together. We can connect through these shared stories and memories today. And that's been a really core tenant of what we're doing because that the experience of artifacting, it gives us that purpose. And it really, as you said, it gives heart to our stories and, and it matters. 
Well, and it's cool because it, it doesn't have to just be, you know, with your children or your best friend. I mean, it could be intergenerational. You can start little kids out on this so that they can, because they have little things that they're going to want to, you know, um, you know, create an account for too, because their stuff's important to them too, and put a whole new light on that from a really young age. I, I think that 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 is cool. And I just love intergenerational interactions um, to, to begin with there. Um, we touched a little bit about, you know, how artifacts can support Alzheimer's and, and caregivers alike. Ellen, do you want to go a little bit more into that though? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, for us, the, the caregivers, um, there, there's a few ways we look at this and we've experienced it and are experiencing it. Um, the caregivers, in some scenarios, we have people that come in, say it's someone from outside, an external caregiver, mm -hmm. and they're they're providing companionship, right? These non-medical caregivers. And there is time in the day where they can be artifacting to not only know their client better, but, but to connect with them and help them connect with the outside uh, world and community that they sometimes get isolated from. And so for us, the caregivers are a really important piece of this because they can have those nice interactions uh, during the day. Um, we also saw, have um, are collaborating with Insight Memory Care in the Virginia area, and they bring um, services in 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 house for people with early Alzheimer's, and they're using it as an engagement tool, right? So their their initiative is really much more about how can we use this to know each other within the the community that they're in and socialize, right? You can do it by theme. Today we're going to talk about travel items. Today we're going to talk about textiles. Today we're going to talk about photos. But it becomes that engagement tool. Oh, and that that's wonderful because people need, uh, you know, they're scared of dementia and what can you say and, and who can participate, but people don't really totally understand when someone feels purposeful, when they feel heard, it, it pulls them out, even for someone who is really quiet and people think they're just a wallflower or that they can't communicate and people are shocked, you know, it's, it's kind of like a you know, music is magic. So can engagement be magic, um, and and really, you know, really really help. And if if like a a paid caregiver was even helping with some of this stuff, you know, you might not want to have a a, a paid um, caregiver dealing with how much is this worth type items, you know. Um, but doing stories that's going to help the family as a whole too, which I think sometimes is overlooked, and, you know, and uh, is, is really a, a cool thing too, because I know not, not everybody is good on the computer or comfortable um, with that. And, you know, pulling in other people, it could be grandchildren as well with this process. Uh, it can be quite amazing and making life easier and better for everyone. Absolutely. And there's something disarming when it's about an object, right? Mm -hmm. So, it's, it's not sitting down and like interrogating you with 30 questions, right? Mm -hmm. it, it's an object. And so you can just say, what is it? Mm -hmm. Where did it come from? You know, why do you have it? It can, it can unravel a story without it feeling like you're being put on the, <laughs> on the defensive. Yeah. Well, and I remember going through like with my mom and dad stuff, there was stuff and it was like, well, this, I know it's a tool. I've never seen a tool like this. What the heck was it? Or even music and musical instruments that they had in this little case. And it was like, these are phenomenal. You know, I, I've never, ever seen, why have I never seen this stuff before? But, you know, it, that's just the way it goes. And to be able to maybe utilize artifacts too to even figure out what the heck is it? Um, because we don't know where to start with all that stuff. I mean, you can Google, but you don't necessarily feel it's always safe, you know, out there and, and things. And to be in, in a sense of community with that um, is pretty neat. Um, if you're just tuning in right now, we are talking about artifacts with Ellen Goodwin, uh, Heather Nickerson, and who are both co-founders of Artifacts, and Tara Ballman, who is the executive director of the National Aging in Place Council. Um, so I want to encourage people to check out their website. It's artifacts, A-R-T-I-F-C 
S-T-S, no A in there, you know, <laughs> dot com. And, um, and, and just, you know, see what this is all about, because the website really uh, does make things blossom. And maybe we want to go, you know, pull up the website right now um, and give people a tour. Um, Ellen, do you want to do that? And I'd love to. I'm here on our website. So we do have a playful uh, tone that we take because we do appreciate that stuff is really has a lot of heart and financial value, but we want to make it very approachable and make people feel comfortable here at Artifacts. And we do provide a lot of different resources that are easily accessible from our top menu, whether that's because you would like to purchase a membership or you want concierge services or other. We have a plethora of inspiration We have checklists that are playful that you can download by theme. We have areas that you can cover by type and they're all kind of uniform. So if I, we talked a lot about downsizing, moving, organizing, and we just talk about, you know, what that means in the context of artifacts. We give you a few examples. Um, Yeah, those piano strings did not make the move. (laughs) And for each example, we give you five tips. And, And Heather and I are big proponents of listen to the people in your community. All of this is taken and refined continuously based on what the art community is telling us and the many, many examples that they share with us, which we adore. So we do have a lot of inspiration here. And I have to give a shout out to our articles by Artifacts, where there is just so much content here, tips and tricks and articles that help you work through no matter your angle. And so we do recognize that everyone comes for different reasons and we provide that information here. Now, when you have an account, and I'm oh, this is always dangerous, right? My my account is quite eclectic, so I should have probably cleaned it up a little bit before we came in today. But I have a large artifacts collection. You can come customize your band alert I have. You can see that I also have a little description about myself. A lot of people pick up them a plant killer. It's not in, on purpose, I promise you. Um, I live in Austin, Texas, and Mother Nature takes a fair hand at that. <laughs> but you can see I, I do artifact a lot while I travel, and I want to have the mementos there to reference. I also artifact recipes. It's a really great category. One of my favorite artifacts is uh, my mom's recipe card, just like this one for her coffee cake that she would make at Christmas and we take to our family in Chicago. But in in the artifact, I not only have the recipe, but I also have her on video teaching my daughter by Zoom during COVID how to make it. (laughs) So it's really great to have my daughter's little voice and my mother's voice and image together uh, in that. Now, when you go into any artifact, I'll pick one, this bracelet, you would never know going through a whole plethora of of jewelry, what's special, what's not. You wouldn't know this came from the gold rush unless someone tells you, well, here is this woman telling me all about it. She's my great aunt. And she told me the story, which I recorded. And I also wrote up part of it here. Uh, We have all these great features built in as well. We make it easy to edit anytime you want to. You can download into a variety of human-friendly, non-proprietary formats. These are your artifacts. We want you to have easy access to them, to share them, to download them. And to that point, sharing, right? This artifact is private, but I can share it into social media if I want to, if it were public. Um, I can also pop out a QR code. So you talked earlier about everyone's helping people downsize and they're saying you put that back. Well, if you put a QR code with it, they can scan it up pops the story and they'll know that it mattered to you. And so that we can tuck that into, into vases. We can put it on the back of picture frames. All of that is super easy to do here. And as I mentioned, maybe you do wonder if this is worth something more than the sentiment might uh, carry for you. You can actually click what's it worth and heritage auctions in Dallas will tell you what it's worth for free. And this is just an initial valuation. They'll say this bracelet, it weighs this much and it's from this period in this design, it might be worth approximately X at market today. But it's just to give you that, that clue. And if all of a sudden you have a $5,000 thing, you know you might wanna think about insuring that and get an appraisal. Um, you might also want to think about who gets that next in a, in a bigger fashion, because <laughs> there could be some serious consequences. Um, every member has their own page that they can that they land on when they w- walk in, and so we have their latest artifacts and all of the really easy resources there for you, so that you can access them anytime, along with our tips and tricks. Well, I love the QR codes. Um, that's that's wonderful. Really makes that easy to be able to do. Uh, I would think you could even just get like a roll of stickies and then just boom, boom, boom. 
you know, on different items. And I had to laugh when you said the, the piano strings didn't go with, we have a story in, in my family. Uh, they, they built a room around a piano. And then when they went to move, we couldn't get the piano out. And yet the piano meant so much. And so I was looking, they, they were starting to rip it apart to get it out. And I'm like, I want a piece of this piano. And I took the little like knobs where the strings went around. And I said, I, I cut that out and I use that as a, to, for my necklaces. And, and then, you know, later on when they moved again, I, um, I wanted to take that and they're like, no, it's part of the house. It's screwed in. And I still miss that to this day. Cause it was like the perfect necklace holder. Cause it was every other one. So I just had to throw that in there. You're upcycling. <laughs> it's a wonderful thing. We love hearing upcycling stories, <laughs> but you know, what you showed us was so easy to maneuver. Um, Tara, what's, what's your experience been with, with using the platform? Oh gosh, I had so much fun with my mom. The last time I went home, we, we had my daughter too. She's five. My mom is 74. So we got to go through her China cabinet, all of the things that I was never allowed to play with as a child that suddenly my daughter can play with, or, you know, I wasn't allowed to even look at it, but it was really fun to go through and hear the stories about why that was so important and things that I thought were just little glass decorative vases open this whole story like this little glass vase used to hold vinegar on the table all the time for grandma's turnip greens and she had turnip greens every meal which led to the stories about family dinners and how everyone lived together and then she drew out a map of like here's where the houses were and here's where I grew up and where my grandma lived and it was just this whole amazing story that formed another story that I never heard before. I'm 46 years old. I had never heard some of these stories and things that I thought were valuable that she's like, oh, I made that in eighth grade in uh, art class. And I just, I've always had it in the cabinet because my mom wanted me to take care of it. So, uh, you know, I love finding all of those stories. And then I have two brothers. So it's really nice for us to be able to say, hey, this is really important to me, or I'd really like this. And just um, sharing the stories with our daughter too, and having her input on things and things that she would like. It was, it's just a lot of fun. I, I think it's a fun bonding moment with your family. Well, and it's neat when you said, you know, oh, my mom didn't think it was a big deal, but it was a big deal to her mom when she made that and to hold on. And so that's just cool to hear too, you know, that, um, you know, we all keep different things for, for different reasons. And uh, that's really important stuff. Now, Heather, I wanted to ask you about, because uh, I think sometimes people go, oh, another site, another app, I don't know how to do this stuff. And they get kind of frustrated with it. What would your response be to them? So I'll share my silly response and then my serious response. So silly response, I will openly declare that Ellen is the tech genius behind this. My background is all about running companies, building companies, scaling companies. So everything you just saw on the website is in large part due to Ellen's ability to understand what does a user need to see and want to see. So we joke at Artifacts that if I can maneuver the website or I can use the app, we're good to go because I am probably the most tech averse person you'd ever meet. No exaggerations. I didn't have Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, none of those before starting Artifacts. So I was, that's my silly answer. Um, I think the serious answer is that we worked very hard with AARP last year. We were part of their um, Innovation Labs Accelerator Program. And we're now part of their age tech collaborative. And one of the very first things we did with them was go through an accessibility review, um, soup to nuts, both on the website and the app. And we got glowing reviews uh, the first go around, but we still had a couple of minor things to fix and we made that a priority. So we focused really hard from both the product side and then also the like how does it look making it look beautiful, simple, and fun? Because it's not just enough for it to actually be simple to use. It has to look, I think, appealing and engaging to the user. Um, one of our pet peeves is that sometimes technology or a lot of times technology that's designed for older adults, it's really dull. 
And who says it's supposed to be dull and a bunch of grays and beiges and whites, and it can also be really hard to read. So we've, again, tried really hard to ensure that what we built is there's bright colors. There's a lot of, you know, it's easy to read the text. The buttons are big enough to click, even if you're on your mobile app. We also ensure that we have responsive design. So if you are moving from desktop to laptop to tablet to mobile, you have the ability, the site will essentially scale with you. So you're not getting some teeny tiny thumbnail or, you know, something that you just, you can't read on the screen. So that's been a really big part of how we built artifacts from day one was to ensure accessibility and also ensure ease of use. Wonderful. Ellen, anything you want to add to that? Yes, I think that <laughs> I don't care what age you are, social media, texting, this has become such a part of our life. If you can do either of those, you're going to find artifacts very easy, right? Because you can just go straight to your phone's gallery, pick a picture, send, hit share, send it to our app, and it'll walk you right through. It can take 30 seconds. And I think that I wouldn't be afraid. I would literally stand up, download that app, go to your nearest shelf, desk, anything, and look for any object that means something to you, anything snap a photo and give it a try. Don't get stuck on where to start, just start. And one of our favorite, our top artifactors, she's over 400 artifacts at this point, all on her mobile app. She's in her seventies. She finds it wicked easy to use with audio and video. And I think she's like, I, I would make her a poster child, you know, someday, but um, it really is that simple. Just don't get stuck on where to start, just try something. And if you are stuck, that's where those checklists I mentioned come into hand where you can just start with other ideas we've gotten from the community. Well, and I think there's a, a belief, you know, that older people aren't tech savvy. And boy, that is a so it's, not true for so many. It's just absolutely many. not true. Yeah. And so getting over that, and I think uh, hopefully we've all gotten our, our over our fear of if I push this button, it's gone forever. <laughs> you know, exactly. I think, just click, it'll be okay. <laughs> I, I remember even for myself when computers were starting big, it was like, oh, what if, what if I just wipe everything out, you know, and, you know, it's like, uh, you, you just click the reverse button and it pops back up, you know, the undo button. <laughs> and and I think you have to be comfortable finding what works for you. And I talk about this in five lessons, artifact and my mother, do you want to do it on desktop? Do you want to do it on a tablet? Do you want to do it on a phone? Do you want to use all of them in some mixture, but use what works for you and also be cognizant, especially with folks. We've worked with a number of folks with dementia, you need to be aware of, of who you're working with and their starting point, right? If they are having difficulty remembering what's text, what's an app and what's a website, maybe you just need to hand them it. It's open or ready and they're good to go, right? It's, it's more a matter of just finding that comfort zone for where you are. Exactly. Which is what we should be doing in all aspects of life, you know, just yeah. adjusting um, because there, there are so many ways to maneuver things. And you know, so many facets, you know, and not everybody uses everything, just even like with Microsoft, not everybody uses everything that comes with the program. And that's yeah. okay. We've all survived, you know, and, we're, and we we do what works for us. Um, Ellen, the, the year is still kind of young, but can you give us a, a sneak peek of what you think will be happening, you know, in your store for artifacts, you know, throughout 2023? <laughs> As fast as we can go, we're going. Um, we are going to be doing a number of big announcements around integrations. How do we make it still easier to manage all of your stuff, right? Now, don't expect us to start becoming movers or downsizers or organizers, right? But starting with next month with a new page, allies and stuff, we're going to try and point people at those allies who can help you in areas that we are not specialized, like professional downsizing and moving, like grief and end of life, you know, even artists that can work with your stuff and capture it and move it forward. But you can look forward to some very exciting integrations that will help you transport these artifacts you've already created into something still greater in value for you. Oh, cool. Anything you want to add to that, Heather? I say yes. We're also looking to get out into the community more. Um, it's been, it was really tough starting a company during COVID. We had all these great plans of this is going to be six months. We'll be on the road and artifacting with people around the country. And that became a year and 18 months. So 
we're finally at the stage where I think people are comfortable being out and about in person again. And we are doing a lot of that. Like Ellen mentioned earlier, being at the genealogy conference um, last week in Rootstock, it was phenomenal helping families stop by and, and get started and capturing those stories. And we'll be doing more of that. I think we've got several events for the next two, three months already lined up in person. We're also going to be doing um, a bunch of virtual uh, series for our members. We've got one next um, next week looking at how do you use all these features and then over into April we'll be kicking off our evenings with artifacts again where we bring in guest speakers and that tackle the world of stuff and answer members questions so we're doing a lot to get folks involved so it's not it's not just an app or just a website but we're trying to help build a community where people can come and get the answers and have resources to Ellen's point um, to help them essentially deal with everything that is um, that sort surrounds their stuff. Okay, great. Is there like a chat forum at all where people can pose questions at all? Um, we don't have a traditional chat forum, but we do have the hello at artifacts email address. So it's H-E-L-L-O at artifacts, A-R-T-I-F-C-T-S dot com. And you're pretty much guaranteed a response. We've got um, our entire team has access to that email address. And if you pose a question, um, you'll get a response in a very timely manner. Well, and I think in some ways it's it's nice that you don't have an open forum because there are spammers and stuff out there and not nice people that are are going to try to take advantage. And so I I I thank you for that. Um, you know, in terms of looking at the well and your security background and stuff, that makes total sense. <laughs> I was just gonna say that was a really big part of like when we set up to build this, mm -hmm. we were looking at how were all the big social media companies coming under fire, like on the Hill in Congress, kind of what were some of the mistakes and lessons learned. Mm -hmm. And we really wanted to build artifacts to be a, a happy and safe space for your histories, your stories, your memories, and of course, all your stuff. So we've purposely removed the ability to publicly comment on artifacts or we've removed the ability to have emojis or likes you know, there's a lot of there's sometimes people can use it in unintended ways and we want to ensure that if you're taking the time to document the story behind your stuff it, it's very personal to you and we don't want someone who's just gonna you know be a Debbie Downer and you know criticize your stuff or your story that's that's not the point so we very purposely made it um, a, a safe and, and private community for you and your family and your friends. I, I love that because the, the judgment that goes on in social media and the cancel, you know, situation that we have, people are talking about the whole mental health issue and how it's affecting people. No one needs that. Uh, you know, it's just like capture joyful moments and stories. Tara, how about you with your group? How are you guys utilizing this or how are you spreading the word? Well, I mentioned Artifacts, the Artifacts app, and we have a book. I mentioned in the book is a part of a way to get families connected and socially re-engage with each other. Um, I also mentioned in all the presentations we do, because I love it that much, because it just, just getting people's stories and helping someone create their legacy is so important to... Um, you know, what you leave behind and what people leave behind. And I love my, actually, one of my favorite parts about this is even though it is subscription based, if you decide I don't want to pay for it anymore, they let you download and take your stuff with you. So it's not like, I, I don't know if Pinterest is like this, but like you lose your account and your stuff is gone, you can take it all with you and still categorize. So I love that you're not locked into using it forever if you don't want to, but I can't imagine now that I have it, not having it. <laughs> Well, that, that's neat to know. And that just shows the development from the heart too, in terms of, of people, which is great. I, I can see for aging in place, this just being a, such a, such a wonderful, wonderful um, piece. Well, I, I loved, you know, when you use the got stuff, it reminds me of, um, wasn't, wasn't there a saying, do you, do, you, do you got milk back in the day, you know? I remember and, got milk. I'm, I'm Wisconsin born and raised. I'm sure it was really strong there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so, and everyone can relate to having, having stuff. And it, it's just a, it was, it's a fun phrase, you know, it, it takes some of the scary out of, out of this process, which I think is really neat. And it equalizes all of us. We, we all got stuff, you know, um, some of us more than others but it doesn't make any difference. Um, you know, we all have our valued things and, and we all probably 
can say we've got more stuff than we need, you know, that we haven't taken the time to go through. And this allows you to kind of go through that process as well. So in wrapping up, I just want to a thank, you know, Ellen and Heather for putting this company together. It's quite amazing. And your the the compliments of your two backgrounds in terms of pulling this together is is pretty phenomenal. It is nice to the eye. It's easy to use. You you have a lot of supports built in. And just both your smiling faces, it just says, you know, come join us. You know, why would you not? I mean, just looking at you, it takes the scary out of new technology, I think, in and of itself. And and Tara, you know, um, saying the same thing. This is fun. This is easy. It's intergenerational. And, you know, how she can't see not having this in her life now, now that she has it there. So again, thank you for capturing, helping people capture stories and legacy moments and um, reminiscing and just being able to organize their life and, and clarifying kind of who they are and, and letting them feel purposeful and valued. I think that that's just so critically important. I would encourage our audience to like, click and share. It just takes a couple of seconds. You know, after talking with everybody, it, it sounds like there isn't anyone who couldn't use this, who couldn't adapt to this young or old. And so, you know, start the process now and introduce it, check it out. I should ask this for our, for our listeners, are all, um, is everything a subscription or is there a trial that people can do at all? So you can create five artifacts completely free. And this not only allows you to try it out, see what you like about it. Um, it also means that when you create an artifact, it's private by default. You can share it with your friend or family member and they can create a free account in order to see that private artifact. That was really, really important to us that you could share and still be able to keep it private. So try five artifacts completely free. And then we have two membership tiers. $36 a year for light with 30 artifacts and $89 a year for unlimited, which also gives you three memberships to give away. So you can bring other family members and loved ones along with you on this artifacts journey, and they can become your collaborators as well. And then we also offer concierge, both virtual as well as in-home concierge services. So I'm thinking of when you mentioned, you know, you can give three away. Um, there's a lot of scrapbooking groups, you know, that are just friends um, that get together and do that. That could be done like this as well. Which Absolutely. Would... And we have what we call invite only circles, mm -hmm. which are one of our joys. Heather and I use them completely differently too, which is super funny, but I have one with my cousins and my aunts and uncles, and we're kind of reuniting family heirlooms. Whereas Heather has some that are around holidays and travel and they're sharing the artifacts of a holiday, all the recipes that were used, the, the tables, decorations, things like that. But you can use these invite only circles and circle members don't have to have an account that is paid. They can just have a free account and contribute their five free artifacts or just be an observer. Okay, wonderful. Um, so again, for, for our listeners, you know, like, click and share, spread the word, be a giver of hope. Well, I mean, this is just a really hopeful um, resource for people to have and, and can help their lives on so, and so many different um, levels, which I think is amazing too, and just shows the overlap. You know, it only takes a couple of seconds. Uh, to share this information. And um, I mean, I can see this even like in Girl Scout troops and things like that. Um, how cool would that be? Because they could, you know, a lot of times they're working on badges. That might even be a fun one to try to get a badge for the Girl Scout group or something where they do this with a grandparent or something, um, which would be neat. But I, I just see endless opportunities for you. So again, people can go to artifacts.com. That's A R T ifcts.com. They are on Facebook. They're on Instagram. They have a YouTube channel. Uh, they have a, a company um, page on LinkedIn. And then both uh, Heather and Ellen have their LinkedIn uh, pages. And then for Tara, you can go to her, her website, which is aginginplace.org. And again, she is on Facebook and YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, and she has her personal site as well. So reach out to these ladies. I know Artifacts is on Dementia Map, and we are just so thrilled that you are part of our, our membership uh, worldwide to, to um, 
just connect people, you know, to things that can help them in life. Why shouldn't we do that? Uh, that's kind of my attitude. You know, why would we not? So again, thank you. Thank you all so much for spending time with us today. Appreciate it. Thank you, Lori. Thank you so much, Lori. So again, please don't forget to check out alzheimerspeaks.com. Check out our new book, Betty the Bald Chicken, uh, Lessons in How to Care, uh, and our free educational resource section. I think you'll find that extremely helpful. Thanks so much, everyone. We will talk with you soon. Bye now.